Okay, so here we are, um, pretty much cooking along. Um, at this point, I mean, the fire is producing really pretty well. Um, at this rate of burn, I don't know if you can get a real good sense of scale off of the uh, off of the camera here. Uh, but that that fire is about three and a half feet wide, about two feet tall. Um, any bigger than that gets hard for one man to manage because you've got to pay some attention to keeping it all closed up. Um, and if you get a lot bigger than that, it gets so hot that it's hard to even approach and tend with a shovel. So it's pretty well human scale at that point, and I, I would suggest kind of trying to keep it under control. So it's the conditions right now for doing this aren't really ideal. Um, I like actually, you know, nice still weather and a light, 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 light mist, I guess, rain, because it kind of keeps the thing cracked down. And a light mist will also kind of help to scrub some of the smoke out of the air, which actually has some valuable hydrocarbons in it that are good for the soil anyway. So, uh, so the conditions aren't really great right now. It's a little windy. Windy isn't good because it has a tendency to make a lot of ash and not so much charcoal, but then all in all, it's going to work out all right. Um, you know, by this method, you know, in bad conditions, you're going to get about a 15% yield. And I would guess probably in good conditions, you'll get a 25% yield if you know what you're doing. Uh, so you can actually return a pretty significant amount of carbon to the soil. And, uh, you know, that's, that's all right. Um, uh, all in all, when you look at the method, considering you can do it on site, considering you can do it pretty well adjacent to where you cut the material. You don't have to transport, you don't have to process, you don't have to do anything like that. I think actually cradle to grave, just straight up slash and char like this is probably the most efficient and like carbon neutral uh, method of making charcoal out there. Okay, well as luck would have it, actually we uh, had a pretty nice rainstorm come in here now. Uh, so it's still a little windy, but you can see that having the rain out here actually really knocks the smoke down pretty considerably and all in all helps the process so if you have the opportunity to take advantage of a kind of a rent windy day or I'm sorry rainy day um, yeah you know that's that's nothing but good and of course you know uh, don't be afraid to try to synthetically create that with a garden hose if you have to Okay, well now we're getting kind of down to the critical point of the thing where actually you start really making the charcoal. Um, you're going to notice that there's a lot of coals in the bottom of that right now. Uh, this is going to be a little hard to show um, without somebody working the camera for me, but it'll work out. Uh, through this whole thing, you know, as it burns down, you just keep uh, condensing the pile. Uh, but you note you got to somehow get all those hot coals out of there and retain things. Well. At this process, what you do is you start rolling the burning material off the top and off to the side of the pile, and then that allows you to reclaim the stuff that's inside once you quench it with the hose. And hopefully I can show you how to do that here. So you start nudging the pile over. All right. Now you can pull off pieces like that, kick them back over. You don't have to be over much concerned about this. You got all those coals there. Basically, just move your fire over. It'll come right back, no panics. All that stuff is really hot. All right. If that makes sense. And then. You claim all this. Alright. There's about a cubic foot. Make sure it's good and out. And uh, you can just keep rolling the fire like that all day long. So, you know, this isn't uh, even two minutes later. I didn't figure you needed to just sit there and watch that probably, but you'll note that the pile there that I just moved in the last little clip there is ignited again. 
And we've got all this that we claimed, like I say, about a cubic foot. If you keep rolling and feeding a fire like that, building a new shell around it, let it build a bank of coals, once that stuff is good and hot like that, you're going to be able to process close to three cubic feet an hour. And once the day gets long and you decide you're done, you just go ahead and break that all down and put the whole works out with a hose. Don't worry about the stuff that is uh, not burned because you're going to use that next weekend to get your fire going again. And all in all, that's all there is to it. Um, it's very practical. It's very simple. And I think you'll find, like I have, that it's very easy to work this into just the daily um, sorts of activities that, well, you know, a sustainable homestead's going to be about. You have something to say, <laughs> Thor? I don't know. you got to love that chicken. Anyway, um, it's raining now and kind of crappy, and I'm basically uh, sick and doing charcoal. This is a small burn. Actually, it didn't take near the amount of time that I thought it was going to. Um, I'd only been at this, I don't know, it's basically since 1 o'clock. It's more or less 5 now. So uh, normally I would probably do something a little bigger than this, but, you know, it, it works for the video. Um, people are going to say at this point, excuse me, we need to chill it out a little bit. Um, um, you know, is it really that simple? And the answer is, well, yeah, actually, it, it really is that simple. Um, like, why do we need to make it more complicated than that? Well, there's two reasons, first of all. Um, first of all, we've been kind of led astray because most of the charcoal that has been made over the last hundred years has not been made for agricultural use. It's been made for fuel, and it's been made for a metallurgical use. So the, the grade that was needed to be produced needed to be a lot higher than what you need for agricultural use. I mean, anything in here, that ash that you see there, that's actually really useful. So, like, there really isn't any waste here. It's only waste if you're going to burn it in a forge. And secondly, uh, it, it, it has something to do with what my focus is. I'm really interested, personally, in growing taro, especially, and le to a lesser degree sweet potatoes, but a whole host of things. Um, I'm really interested in producing that and farming farming like real uh, Hawaiian crops. What I'm not interested in farming is uh, research money. And so I don't have a vested interest in trying to make things complicated. I have a vested interest in making things very simple. And I think, unfortunately, I think like I said this morning, um, we do not have a shortage of expertise. We actually have a real shortage of root vegetables. And if we adopt a focus that focuses on what we need to produce rather than what we've got way too much of, all of a sudden we're going to find that simplicity um, and simple solutions uh, are going to be accessible to us once we finally get our fingers in the dirt and uh, really go after putting it in the ground and making it happen. And I think there's some hope for us to be found in that. Uh, anyway, that's about all I got to do here. I'm going to kick this fire apart and put it out with a hose, and that'll be it. But uh, if you have any more questions, um, or if nothing, none of this came through very clear, just, just email me, and I don't mind, uh, of course, answering any questions you might have. Hope that's helpful.